Hey everyone, Jason here with another coaster cutout video. Today we're going to be doing Lightning Rod from Dollywood. This kit is available directly from the park. I don't know the exact price, I actually picked it up on eBay and the seller took the price tag off. Um, on eBay it was a little bit more expensive, I think it was like $55. Um, at the park it's probably $35 to $45, somewhere in there. Um, but I don't know exactly right off the top of my head, but this is available from Dollywood. Lightning Rod used to be an RMC Topper Track Wood Coaster. However, over the last couple of years, because of problems, they've replaced most of the track with Ibox Steel Track. Back when I rode it, it was all wood. At the time, I considered it my number one coaster. I haven't been able to ride it since they've changed it, so I don't know if that still holds. Um, but regardless, it's a great coaster and it's a great looking coaster. So let's just jump right in. So within the box, we have three and a half wood sheets of pieces, um, as well as a multiple page sheet of instructions here. Uh, that we can kind of go off of. Um, because I'm gonna be painting this model and doing a few modifications to it, I'm gonna do it a little bit out of order. Um, right here, it actually has a starting with the seats. The first step I'm gonna do is actually on the very back page, which is the stand. Um, we want things to be able to dry and be prepped and ready to go um, as we start putting things together. Um, with this kit, I'm gonna be doing a few things a little bit different too. I'm also gonna be using wood filler and try to hide all of the connection points on the model. Um, and I'm gonna be doing a little bit more sanding than normal. Um, to, to shape the pieces a little bit more as well. So we'll see how that all turns out. One of the first things you're gonna want as you jump into painting one of these kits um, is kind of a reference. So I've, I've got a couple reference photos here um, that'll help me see what I need to paint everything. Um, so I have that here on my tablet ready to go. So the stand for any single car model is gonna be these four pieces here that you see on the table. Uh, the base plate is gonna have the logo engraved right there. So it says lightning rod and then Dollywood. I actually like to change that logo up and to help with that, I actually flip the stand over and I use the bottom of the stand as the top. For my wood supported coaster, so even though this is an iBox steel coaster, dust off wood supports, I actually like to stain my bases. Um, I think it gives it kind of a more natural wood look uh, for the stand, which is representing the supports of the coaster. Um, so I'm gonna stain uh, all four of these pieces. Now to do that, I have just a, a little can of stain here. I'm actually gonna just use a paper towel to apply this. Um, so I'm gonna just dip it in there and then we'll just kind of brush the stain onto these wood pieces. Um, you can use a brush, you can use a lot of different ways. Um, you don't want it to pool on there. I want it to just kind of be a thin coat. So I'm gonna kind of wipe away the excess. Um, I'll do the same down here on the, the main base and I'm gonna do that to all four of these pieces. So there you can see my four pieces stained. This piece I only had to stain one side um, because the bottom is gonna be face down. Um, however, the other pieces I need to stain both sides. Uh, the reason I do this first is I actually want these pieces to dry completely. Um, as I mentioned, I have a decal here that I've, I've created with the Lightning Rod logo that I'm gonna be putting on the base plate. However, it's not gonna stick very well um, if the base plate isn't completely dry and the stain takes quite a while to dry. Um, but the rest of these pieces are all double-sided, so I'm just gonna set them off to the side now. One thing I forgot to mention at the start, um, you wanna to wanna to protect your surface. So I have a couple pieces of uh, packing paper here, um, beneath, but beneath this I actually have a plastic garbage bag laid out um, so that the wood stain can't bleed through all the way to the plastic table underneath. Um, I've had that happen before and it does stain the table. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be doing a few things here a bit out of order. Um, and like I said, for the reason for that is that as I put these pieces together and paint them, um, it makes more sense, so the, the instructions are really just for putting it together the most efficient way possible. Um, but when you're painting it, sometimes you want to put pieces together that go together um, and then, you know, do all of your molding, painting, everything with those pieces, let them set up, and then assemble it from there. And so, for that, one of the first things I want to start painting is going to be the, the front of the hot rod car. Um, it's going to be the red hot car car with hot rod with the yellow, orange gradient flames on it. Um, and I want to do that first because I actually want to apply a clear coat to it. Um, and so I have a, a glossy clear coat here that I'm going to apply after I assemble that. Um, and so we can look here on uh, page three, I believe, um, and kind of start seeing the pieces for this. And so first I'm going to pop out um, these side pieces um, that are going to have the flames that are the front of the car, um, as well as the grill, which is two pieces, and then the top piece here. I also want the back piece, which is gonna be this kind of almost squarish trapezoid shape with one tab on the top and two on the bottom. So now that we have those pieces, we'll just start putting together the front. Um, we'll begin by taking this back piece here that's gonna be inside the train and attaching it to the top here. 
Uh, we'll just kind of snap that tab into place. It's gonna go in pretty easily there. Um, and then we'll take the two side tabs here with the flames and attach them as well. You wanna make sure you get them snapped in there nice and tightly um, so that everything's snug. And we'll do the same thing with the other side. And then the same thing with these two grill pieces, they're gonna snap onto the front. So it's gonna kinda of look like that. Um, one of the first things you're gonna notice, um, at the connection points, you're gonna see these tabs there. Um, in between the two grills, you're gonna see kind of a gap. And so those are things that I kinda of wanted to try to address when I built this model. Um, is how do we kind of hide that stuff um, and make the model look just more smooth. And so for that, I actually have a little container here of wood filler that I'm going to be trying to apply into the cracks and into those tabs. So as I mentioned, we're just going to try to squeeze a little bit of this out um, into these cracks and then we'll kind of use our fingers to shape it a little bit. This stuff dries pretty quickly. Um, it's sandable and it, it, it kind of looks like wood um, afterwards, um, which doesn't really matter as much because we're going to be painting it, but like I said, I'm going to kind of put that there in between the grill and then I'm just going to kind of use my finger and uh, take the excess off and we'll just kind of go over it, fill in that crack there. Maybe add a little bit of extra that we can sand down afterwards. And we're also going to put a little bit of this, like I said, in each of the connection points and kind of cover those up as well. So there you can kind of see all the connection points covered. Um, it looks pretty sloppy right now, um, but that's because I haven't sanded it yet. That's the nice thing about this stuff is once it dries, um, we can sand it and shape it and mold it um, and hopefully make just the whole front of the car look very rounded and smooth. So now we'll get to sanding. So here I am about a month later now. Um, I finished sanding this, it's had, like I said, a month to dry. Um, took a little bit of break, did a little bit of traveling, um, but I'm back to pick up on this project. Um, so you can kind of see, I really like the shaping on this model now. Um, you can see we filled in all of the kind of little gaps and once you paint it, you really shouldn't be able to see any of the seams. Um, now when I do this, I like to paint kind of as I go along, um, but I wanted to kind of do all the same colors at the same time. This is gonna be primarily red with the yellow flames with a little bit of a grading in it. Also, the side of the train is going to have that same exact color scheme. And so I'm actually going to get the side pieces and get them ready and paint everything together at the same time. So the side is going to be comprised of four pieces. We're going to have two left pieces here and then two right pieces. Um, they have the design on them. Um, we're not going to do a lot of modification to them. Um, and we're also not going to quite put them on yet. Um, as I mentioned, I, I want to have these kind of painted um, before we, we begin assembly there. With the paint, um, I actually got a little scrap piece here from another coaster cut out. This is from Velocity Coaster, but um, and did a, a little bit of testing here um, to figure out how exactly I wanted to do the gradient for the flames um, as well as the red. Um, so here you can see I have the glossy red that I like um, along with the yellow and a gradient that I'm going to paint this with. Um, the nice thing about this is you can kind of practice and get your, your technique just right without um, messing up the pieces. And so here you can see that that's exactly what I want it to look like. And so that's what we're gonna replicate. And then I put a clear coat spray over the top of it. Now, before I paint these, I actually wanna just round the, the, the outer edge corners a little bit. I'm looking at the trains, it's not just completely a flat edge. Like I said, I'm trying to do a little bit of shaping here. Um, not a lot, just gonna take the sandpaper and just kinda of just go over each of these uh, front and top edges um, really quick. Only the front and top. I'm not gonna do the, the back edges or uh, the bottom. Like I said, just a little bit, just to kind of soften it up a little bit. So before we begin painting the rows, we're actually going to assemble them a little bit here. Um, each of the, the rows are going to be exactly the same. So steps one through five of the instructions here repeat themselves. Um, so I can build them both kind of at the same time. Um, so we'll start with these two seat pieces here at the bottom. So these are the bases of the seats. And each of these is going to have one of these pieces attached to it. So we're going to attach it so that this tab here at the top um, so there's there's basically one tab on the front one on the back and then one straight down and that's going to hook directly into the seat 
And so now once we have it there, you're gonna have three tabs here on the back and then one here on the front. We'll do that with both of them. Now we're gonna attach the backs of the seats. So the backs here um, look exactly the same. Like I said, they have a little bit of a print here that kind of shows you the different textures on the back of the seat. Um, that's actually gonna be important. We're actually gonna use two different sheens of black. Um, so this bottom part is more of a glossy black. The top is a matte black. So I have both paints here. And when we paint it, we're gonna paint glossy down here um, and matte at the top. Um, but with this, there's three holes in it. So we can simply snap this directly onto the piece that we just created. And then repeat. Now the next step is going to have us adding the little shin guards here at the bottom or the little leg rests um, as well as the top piece. Um, so we're going to just snap this on the front. There's only one tab, one hole there. Snap it on. And then this top piece is just going to snap on the top. And then the final piece of the benches is going to be to put these end pieces on. So there's going to be three tabs here on the end that are going to connect um, right there, right there, and right there. And then repeat with the other side. So there we have our two completed rows. When you're painting this, you may choose to paint the different pieces as you go. You could have painted the, the black seats and then the side pieces separately. Um, but the way I'm doing this, I feel like it'll be a little bit easier because this will give me a chance now to fill in the holes on each of these, these pieces um, before we move on. Now, as with before, like we did on the front, um, I'm going to be using this wood filler here to fill in each of these holes and then we'll kind of smooth it off and then sand it um, just to make sure that you can't really see anything. So now that we filled all the holes, we can get some sandpaper and sand it off. So there we have it looking quite a bit better. Um, now I actually want to do a little bit more sanding on the headrest too. Um, they have a little bit of rounded edges, so, so I'm gonna get my little electric sander here and I'm just gonna kind of round the edges a little bit. So there we have both of them completely filled in and sanded. So now we're gonna begin painting. I'm gonna actually start on this front piece here. Um, and I'm gonna begin with the, the glossy yellow. So we're gonna begin on the front piece here because it's had longer to dry. And we're gonna begin with the glossy yellow for the flames. Now for the yellow, I'm gonna be using this relatively small brush here. Um, we're gonna be painting in all of the flames in yellow. Um, and I'm gonna try to keep it uh, within the lines. With the yellow, it's not as big of a deal because um, we will be painting red over it uh, later. Um, but I'm still gonna try to stay mostly within the lines. And so we're just gonna kind of paint um, within all of the, the etched lines on here. Um, now, some of the etched lines did get covered up a little bit. Some of them got sanded off a little bit. Um, that's okay. Um, we'll, we'll still make it work. Um, but like I said, I'm just going to kind of paint all of the yellow in right now. So there we have the yellow flames painted on the front. Um, it's not perfect. I try to stay in the lines, went out a little bit. Um, you also notice it doesn't quite pop yet. Um, I think it'll pop a lot more once we get right around it, but we'll also do a second coat. So we're gonna paint the yellow flames on the side pieces and then we'll come back and put a second coat on the yellow here um, just to make sure it's coated really well um, and that yellow really pops. So now we'll move to the side seats. So there we've completed the yellow on both ends of both of these seats. 
Um, we're gonna go back to the front piece now and do a second coat. So now I've applied two coats to everything. Um, on the sides of the wood, that's gonna be enough. However, on some of these burnt edges here, um, it's actually gonna require several more coats than that um, to get good coverage. And so I'm gonna kinda let this dry, um, but we're gonna kinda shift focus back to the front car. So now that we have our last coat of yellow top coat on here, um, I'm gonna start by trying to add the gradient. So I did a little bit of practice on this earlier. Um, it, the technique doesn't work every time, so I'm gonna try it a few times here, possibly. Um, but we're just gonna get some of the red paint here on the brush and just kind of do a little line right down here in the middle. And you want to do this while the yellow paint is still a little bit wet so that it will kind of blend together. Um, so we're just going to do kind of a, a red line just right there down the middle, um, get the excess red paint off of here. And I'm just going to take this brush and just kind of brush it off to the side, uh, tapering it a little bit each time and kind of lifting the brush away. just kind of fade it a little bit. Uh, we may have to go back and forth on this a little bit too a couple times um, just to get it perfect uh, but we should be able to get the kind of the, the fade uh, and gradient we want within the, the flames. Like I said it's not perfect there. Um, we can come back here with the yellow paint get a little bit of yellow paint and kind of come in the other way. If the gradient doesn't work, um, you can simply just get a little bit of water and a little paper towel and wipe it away and start over. So we're gonna put another yellow base coat down first. Like I said, that, that's kind of key to getting the gradient to work. So the gradient here is actually proven a little bit more difficult um, than I thought. Um, I practiced it twice on scrap wood. Um, both times it worked exceptionally well um, and so I thought I had the, the technique kind of nailed uh, but it appears that it's a little bit different for some reason on this front train um, so I'm just kind of do it a few times until I get it right like I said I can keep fixing it um, I don't know if there's a limit to how many times I can fix it but um, to do it I'm gonna put a red line right down here right in the middle with just some um, of this red paint clean off the brush and then just kind of brush it and hope it blends in with the yellow We'll get a little bit more red again in the middle. So you can kind of see the gradient there. May not be perfect, may touch it up a little bit, uh, but we're gonna move on and do the red first and see kind of how it all looks together. Um, but before that, I'm gonna try to do the gradient on the side of the trains as well. So now we're gonna start painting the red on here. I'm gonna start with a fine brush here and just kind of get around the edges of the flames very carefully. And then once we get around the, the edges of the flame done, um, we'll get a bigger brush and we'll paint the rest of it in. And then we'll put a coat on uh, these other cars as well. 
um, just on the sides. The black is going to be, the back is going to be a matte black, um, but we're just going to do red on the sides here. Um, and then we'll go back into a second coat on the lead car. So now that we have the red and the yellow done on this model, the last step before we put the clear coat on top of it is going to be to do this grill on the front here. Um, so the grill has a design printed on it. Um, there's looking at pictures of the lightning rod train. Uh, I, the lightning rod train has gone through several variations, um, but even with this current iteration with the, the more simplified front, it appears that there's two different styles. One that has seven lines, one that has eight. Um, this has seven, um, however, the seven one is a little bit shaped differently. Um, and so I'm actually gonna try to paint the gray over pretty heavy and cover the printed design on here. Um, and then I'm going to use a, a vinyl cutter and do black vinyl. Um, you could just paint this in really carefully and get the detail. Um, I want it to be just, just perfectly crisp and so we're gonna do that. Um, but before we do that, we need to do the gray part. And so to do that, I'm going to mask off um, the face so that we can get just a crisp line between the red and the gray. So there you can see I put the painter's tape just kind of around the grill. Um, there are some red and yellow we have to cover up too, so we're going to have to lay that on pretty thick. Um, but you want to press around the painter's tape, just make sure you got a tight seal um, so that when you do peel this away, then you're going to have a crisp line. For the gray, we're going to be using the Apple Barrel uh, Dolphin Gray Gloss Paint. As I mentioned, we're going to need to do several coats. You can see kind of the first coat there. I mean, you can still see some red through it. You can still see the black lines a little bit. Um, we're going to let it, it, it dries pretty quickly to the touch. So we're going to let it dry here just for a few minutes and then do a couple more coats. So now that we've painted all the gray on here, a few coats, I'm going to peel away uh, this tape here and hope that we have, like I said, a clean edge here between the gray and the red. I think that looks pretty good. There's a little bit of touch up maybe on this one side on, on the seam. Um, I'll get a brush and just go with the red a little bit and, and touch it up. Um, but other than that, it looks really good. So as I mentioned earlier, for the grill, I cut this out on vinyl. Um, if this is something you want to do as well, I'll keep the, the file, the SVG cut file, um, down in the link below so that you can get this for the grill. Um, you could just paint it in. Um, I, I chose to do this way just to get a little bit of a crisper look. So we have the transfer tape here. And now I'm just going to simply apply this to the front of the train right where I want it. And then we'll fill away the transfer tape. So there's what the first side looks like. And then we can repeat it on the other side with the other one. So there we have the full grill applied. Um, now the transfer tape did shake, take away a little bit of the gray paint here in the middle. Um, so just in the middle, I'm gonna grab my brush here where I peel it away and we'll apply just a little bit more gray paint there, touch that up. Um, shouldn't need more than just one coat here since it's just a touch-up coat. And so there's the completed front. Um, so the next step I want to do here is I'm going to apply a clear coat to this. Um, so I have this just clear glaze um, that I'm going to spray on. I'm not going to do it right here and I'm not going to do it on video. Um, so when I come back, um, we'll have the pieces done and we'll actually probably move on and work on part of the other train while we let this dry. This says it takes about 24 to 48 hours to fully set. Um, we'll probably start working with it in a little bit less time than that, but we are gonna give it some time to dry. But before we apply that, I'm actually going to be taping it off so that we don't get the wood parts that aren't painted um, covered in the clear coat first.
So there we should hopefully have these taped off well enough that we won't get a lot of uh, gloss spray on the inside. If so, I think the paint will cover it too. Um, but this will hopefully help us just gloss just the metallic parts of the train. Um, the other thing with the, the gloss paint is it should help affix this vinyl um, to the front of the train just a little bit better as well. Um, so yeah, let's get to that. So I've sprayed that now and we're gonna wait for it to dry. Um, but in the meantime, we can work on some of the other things. Um, the first thing I'm gonna revisit is the stand. Um, so if you remember at the start of the video, I stained it. Um, you wanna let that dry after you stain it for about 24 hours. Um, at least it's been drying for about two months now um, or a month and a half or something. I don't know. I, I stained it quite a while ago, um, but it's definitely dry now. Um, so the first thing I want to do, um, I cut out a lightning rod logo in vinyl. Um, just kind of like I did for the, for the front plate. Um, so I'm actually going to apply this first to the base plate. Um, this won't adhere if it's still wet. So that's one of the reasons you want to let it dry. Um, if you're just going to paint the logo or whatever, then that's fine as well. Um, but I have this cut out in vinyl, so I have it here. Actually, before I do it, I'm going to put this piece in place in the middle here to help me line it up. Um, so we're going to, I guess we have to put this piece on first. Um, so these two pieces are going to hook together like that. Um, and then we can hook this here on the plate. Um, I was trying to line that up centered, um, but I'd hate to, to get it on there where I thought it was centered and then put this on and see it way off. Um, so now that we have that there, I can kind of line up the top of the engine um, with that and also center it vertically um, between the two. We'll drop that right on to right into place and just kind of smooth it down and then peel away this transfer tape. Then this top piece here is just going to slide down into place and balance the car once we put it on. And so that's what my finished plate is going to look like right there. So we've fit, pretty much finished all of the detailed pieces of the car, the red and the yellow. Everything else here is going to be basically be the base, the wheels, the lap bars. Um, so everything's going to be painted either a glossy or matte black or silver or grayish color um, as, as we move forward. So everything here is going to be kind of plain, um, but we're still going to paint it a little bit as we go. Um, we'll probably assemble sections of the, the coaster and then uh, fill in wood holes if we need to, sand that off and then paint it as we go. Um, but back on page one here, um, yep, we're still on page one of the instructions because we, we skipped ahead a little bit and did some of the other stuff. I got some paint on here as well. Um, step six here is going to have us doing part of the base of the coaster. So step six is going to have us using this piece right here as well as this piece right here that's going to snap down here in the front. Um, so we'll snap that one in first. And then these pieces, there's two of these pieces, one on each side. Um, it, it, it's kind of funny. They actually show these ones already snapped in and then this one snapped in after. Um, but if you look here on the front, there's a little cutout and that's going to go over the, the front one. Um, so that front one really needs to be done in place. So if you're putting this together, the instructions are a little bit tricky there, uh, but now we can just come here and drop this one down into place as well as the other one. And then we'll bend this front piece so that it's kind of flush with the other ones. And then we'll just kind of press down on it. So step seven is going to be pretty basic. It's going to be this piece right here and it's going to attach um, onto this. So there's three cutouts on each side here, three tabs on each side of this. And so we'll just simply come in here and press each of these three tabs down into one of those cutouts on each side. And so that's going to create the base of the model. So your, your seats and your lap bars and all that are going to hook down into here eventually. So step eight is going to have us assembling the lap bar. Um, each lap bar is going to assist of two of these side brackets as well as one of these lap bars and then one of these shin guards. And so we'll grab one of these side brackets here and we'll start with just the shin guard down here at the bottom. Um, we'll slide that into place. And then the lap bar on top. And so with the lap bar, you want the, the curved part on the bottom. That's like I said, the part that's gonna go over your lap. Um, with the shin guard, you want the curved part on the inside. Um, so this is eventually gonna hook in on there. And then we'll put the other side bracket in place. Now, one thing I've noticed with these, is there's a little bit of a weak point right here um, just where the wood's really narrow next to that hole. Um, this one cracked as well. One of the other ones cracked um, in half as I pulled it out. Um, I know Coaster Dynamics is really good at replacing things if it breaks. Something like this, since I'm gonna be painting it, it's actually pretty easy to just glue it back together. And so that's what I'm gonna do in this instance. I'll, I'll reattach these pieces, put a little bit of wood glue on there. Um, I'm also gonna be putting some putty to fill in those holes. And so that should help give it a little bit more structural integrity as well. So I'm just going to hurry up and assemble the other three lap bars. So 
So there we have all four lap bars assembled. Um, as I mentioned with these, I want to fill in the little holes on the side. Um, so you can see this is the one that's what we do. I'll probably do this one last. Um, but there's two places on the side um, where the tabs went in. I don't really want that to be visible on the, the painted model. Uh, we may also do a little bit of sanding on this and just kind of round some of the edges um, on the lap bars. Um, but first we're going to get some of this wood putty and just fill in each of those little holes. So there we have four completed lap bars. Um, I still need to sand them, but we're gonna let it dry for a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna put these off to the side. So now we're gonna skip ahead to step 13 in the instructions. Step 13 is gonna have us using one of these pieces here along with this piece here. Um, now one thing you wanna pay attention to, there's actually two pieces that are very similar. Um, the only difference is here is this one only has one tab on top while this one has two. Also, this one's a little bit taller right here in the middle section. Other than that, they look very similar. We're gonna be using the taller one with two taps. And then we're gonna take this piece here and there's these four holes in the top. We're gonna to just put two of these tabs in the two end ones. So the pieces that we're actually putting together right here with this is the wheel assemblies. And we're gonna be repeating these steps twice. So I'm just gonna do both of them at the same time. So we did those two pieces there. Um, now we have the other tall one. We're gonna put this tab here on this one as well. Step 14 is going to have us using these pieces right here that kind of have the little uh, side running wheels on them. Um, it's only etched into one side, it's not on the back, it's only on the one side. Interestingly on the instructions it has us doing one face up and one face down. I'm actually going to do both of them face up um, and I don't know that you'll be able to see either of them really, um, so it may not matter anyways. Um, but these pieces are going to snap in um, to these holes down here underneath this piece we already put in. And the wheels are going to be facing outwards. So I should have read ahead in the instructions a little bit. There's actually a little bit of a mess mistake here. So it's telling us to repeat steps 13 through 17 two times um, to create the wheel assemblies. However, um, the two wheel assemblies are actually slightly different. I mentioned we had this tall one with the two tabs and the shorter one with the one tab. Um, these are actually the two different wheel assemblies that's having us create. Nowhere in the instructions does it actually say um, to use this piece to create your wheel assembly. However, later on in step 23, it has us putting this as the rear wheel assembly. Um, so I'm actually going to take these three pieces off of one of these bigger pieces and then putting them on one of the smaller pieces here. Now step 15 is gonna have us putting the other side on. So with the one with the two tabs, we'll grab the other one with two tabs and line up these four tabs with the four holes and press them in. And then on the other one, um, we'll grab the other one with one tab here on the top that's a little bit smaller and match that one up and press it in as well. And step 16 is gonna have us applying these wheels to the outer edges. Um, the wheels are only etched on one side, so that side you'll probably want facing out. Um, so I'll just come in here and snap this into the end. So it's just like that. We're going to repeat that three more times. And then step 17 is going to have us taking three pieces and stacking them and putting them on each side for the main road wheels. Um, so the bottom piece is going to be that piece there. Um, it's just a semi-circle or half-circle and we can slide that on with the circle facing up. The second piece is going to be kind of the same piece but with the remainder of the wheel and the wheel is going to be facing down with the etching facing out. And then the third piece is going to be this outer piece here um, that has the, the six holes in it um, and that's going to go over the outside of the wheel here and hold it all in place. And then we'll recreate that same exact stack uh, for the other three wheels. And so that's actually gonna complete the steps that are gonna repeat. Before I start painting this stuff, um, just a couple more steps we're gonna complete. Um, so step 18 is gonna have us using the one with the two double tabs, and we're gonna be putting this piece here on top. And so you can see these two cutouts as well as these two holes, those are gonna hook into the four tabs here on the top. And this is gonna be the base for the front of our vehicle. Um, we're probably gonna to have to do a little bit of uh, painting on this, uh, maybe a little bit of red. We'll have to see how it all looks. Um, once we get the, the red piece on here. 
Um, but we'll probably have to paint a little bit of it that way as well. Um, but for now, um, we'll have that on there just like that. The final step before um, we do the, the wood filler here and then begin painting these pieces is going to be actually to install these pieces here that are gonna kind of hold the front and the back together. Um, this comes in step 23. And so we're gonna have this tab on the front is going to go into one of these two holes here. Um, we want these two tabs to be lined up towards the back of the vehicle. So we're gonna put um, those further, furthest away from the front here. And we'll just pop this into place. Um, same with the other one. These are gonna kind of be the, the structure that holds the, the width or the, the length of the car. And then we'll take this back piece and use the other two end tabs to attach it on. And so that's kind of going to create the, the assembly of the bottom here. So before we paint this, we're going to be filling in some of the holes on here. Um, not all of them, um, just some of the ones that are more visible, so like the ones on the wheels here, um, down there, and also maybe some of these on the, on the frame, but not like on the back wheels. Um, really only need to fill in the things that's gonna, that are going to be visible. So now we kind of have all those filled in. Um, we're going to let that dry and then we'll sand it. Um, but now we can move back to the lap bars. So the lap bars, we're just going to go and sand where we put this putty before um, just to make it super smooth. Kind of like that. We'll repeat that with all four of them. And then in addition to sanding where the putty is, I'm also going to sand just a few other areas, um, just kind of like on the, the tops of the lap bars and maybe this, this uh, shin guard here, maybe a little bit on the edges of the bars, just to make it a little bit more rounded, um, like what you'd actually see on the coaster. And so that's what we're going to look like up to this point. I'm going to repeat that with the other three as well. Okay, so we have the lap bars all sanded down now. It's gonna be time to paint. Um, the color on these is a little bit unique. So you, you kind of have the, the gray at the front, but this is a little bit more metallic but not quite silver metallic. Um, so we're gonna be doing a little bit of mixing here. So we're actually gonna take a little bit of this gray here, and then we're gonna take a little bit of the silver metallic just to give it a little bit of a metallic -y sheen and mix it in. Uh, maybe just a little bit of black too, not a lot, just, just a drop maybe. Then we'll grab our brush here and mix these all together. Um, now, the one thing with mixing paints, you want to make sure you kind of have enough to do your entire job because it's really hard to, to match the colors if you don't, and you kind of have to go over everything again. Um, so I'm going to mix these all together really well here and hope that this is enough. This should be enough to cover the, the entire lap bar, um, really just the side pieces, um, the, the crossbar and the, the, so the lap bar, the two crossbars, the lap bar and the shin restraints are both going to be black. Um, a matte black, so um, we really only need to paint the side bars with this. Um, so now we have our paint here, we just kind of come on the side and, and paint over it. Um, you want to make sure you get the edge as well. Um, they may need multiple coats. Um, you'll notice on the edge, you do also have these two little handles that stick out. Those are going to be black. Um, you could paint them this color first and then paint over it black. Um, if I get some paint on there, it's not a big deal, um, but I'm not going to try to get great coverage on those. So that's going to finish that color there. Um, that color actually went on really well with just one coat. It doesn't really need anything else. Um, you can see it kind of, kind of has just a little bit of a shiny sheen to it. Um, like I said, it, it is glossy gray with a little bit of silver metallic, um, but I feel like that matches what I'm, I'm seeing in the pictures really closely. Now for the rest of the lap bar, um, it's going to be a matte black. And so we're not going to be using the gloss one. We're going to grab our matte black here and get a little bit of this out. And like I said, we'll use this matte black to kind of do the two crossbars. Um, and then after I do all the crossbars, then I'll also do um, the little round handles as well. So 
So there we have kind of the crossbars painted black. Um, like I said, these two handles here are gonna be black as well. Um, and the black actually goes all the way around uh, the, the gray bar. And so I'm gonna first paint those and then I'm gonna try to paint straight. Um, try to do it without masking because I the gray's not 100% dry yet, so I don't really wanna mask it if I don't have to. Um, but I'm gonna just paint these black handles. So there we've finished painting all four of the lap bars. Um, they're looking really good. We'll let them dry for a little bit. Um, now it's gonna be time to move on to painting this. Now before we move on to what I would consider the final phase of painting, which is gonna be painting this, um, as well as this piece, as well as the seats and such. Um, these are mostly generic neutral colors. Um, most of the base is gonna be a dark metallic, um, almost like a gunmetal color. Um, seats are gonna be black. Um, before we get into this, th these bigger pieces of painting, um, the last step I want to do is I actually want to fill in some of the tabs and openings on this base piece that we did. Um, we probably could have done this sooner, uh, but we didn't. So I'm going to get some more of this wood putty out and we're going to fill in um, these tabs along the bottom as well as a couple here on the top um, so that you really don't see any of that stuff at all once it's been assembled or once it's been painted. So there we've put the putty on. Um, you can go a little bit heavy handed with it because you're gonna be sanding it to smooth it out anyways. Um, but while that dries, we'll set that off to the side and we'll go back to this piece. So this piece, I actually put the putty on um, a couple days ago. So it's completely dry now. You really don't have to let it dry a super long time, um, but this one has been drying for a long time. Um, so we'll grab our sandpaper here and go where we've done the putty and just quickly sand it smoothly. So this is now ready to paint. Um, so a lot of this, as well as a lot of this, pretty much 90% of it is going to be the same color and it's gonna be a dark metallic, which is gonna to require to, me to mix paints. So when I mix paints, I like to typically mix enough to do everything I'm doing, um, just because it's really hard to match colors. Um, if this and this are a little bit different, um, that's not a big deal, but I'm actually gonna be doing quite a bit of paint here. Um, even if we have a little bit of extra, so I'm gonna get a lot of this metallic silver here. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the glossy black. Um, black goes a long way. We don't have to add a ton to it, um, but we get a decent amount there. And then we'll get a decent sized brush. I'm not going to get my biggest brush here, um, but we'll get a decent sized one here and mix it all together. And then once you have the color you have, or the color you like, you can just start painting. Um, on this piece, um, we're going to get a decent coat. Um, don't have to worry about getting a ton of excess. When we do the other plate, um, on the other plate, there's a lot of little openings and stuff that like the seats have to snap into and the lap bars. If you get a lot of paint in those holes, um, then it's going to make it really hard to attach pieces. So we're going to lay it on very thin around those openings. Um, this one, you don't have that problem as much. Um, we still don't want a lot of excess paint on here, um, but we're just going to paint, I think, this entire piece the same color. And then we'll add a little bit, a few accents and stuff with other colors on it. Um, but like I said, let's just paint this whole thing the same color. One of the things you'll find with these metallic paints um, is that they actually, you don't need a lot of coats. Um, just a very thin coat um, really covers up the edges, covers up the surface, um, makes it really nice. You don't see the burned edges at all after one thin coat. Um, and you can really spread it around uh, quite a bit without having to really lay it or layer it on there. So there you can see we have pretty good coverage on everything except for this top plate. That's going to be covered um, when we put this piece on. Um, but we have pretty good coverage everywhere else. You want to look around, make sure um, there's no empty spaces. Um, you really won't be seeing much of the bottom 
probably after you display it anyways. Um, so if you, if you look around, make sure there's nothing visible, then you, you should be good to move on. So now we'll return to this piece that we did um, and just quickly sand off uh, these edges to make it smooth again. And then we'll continue painting. Uh, for this one, I am going to grab my bigger brush. There's a lot of flat surfaces on here. Um, like, I'd set, like I did mention, there's a lot of holes here in the bottom. Um, that's where seats and stuff are going to connect. So on those, you kind of want to go um, very thin. So I'm actually going to get this paint and I'm going to go to a solid place first and get a lot of the paint off. Um, and then we'll just, with whatever's left in the brush, we'll just kind of go over these bottom areas that have the holes. Like I said, you don't want to get um, really paint in any of those holes because you don't want uh, the other pieces to be difficult to connect. You can still usually connect them um, and it does actually kind of make the wood a little bit soft and soggy almost, um, but we don't really want a lot of, uh, we don't really want it to be more difficult than it needs to be. So there we have all the visible surfaces done on there as well. Um, so I'll set that off to the side. So that's gonna wrap up painting the metallic color. Um, all that's left now is the black, um, and then we'll be doing some touch up after we do final assembly. Um, as you can see, like on here, we got these tabs here at the bottom that when we connect them onto the other piece, um, there's gonna have to be some touch up and stuff to make it all blend together a little bit. Um, but so we'll have to do some, a little bit of touch up there. Um, but we're gonna have some matte black as well as some gloss black. Uh, so we'll probably start here with the matte black. Um, there's going to be a lot more of it. Um, so we'll do that first. And then once we have the matte black all on there um, and dry it a little bit, then we'll probably do a little bit of gloss over it just kind of as an accent. Um, so I'm gonna get the, the matte black paint out here along with a decent sized brush. Once again, not my biggest one. Um, we'll actually start, uh, we'll start with the seats. We'll save this piece for last because that one's gonna uh, not need to dry very much. Um, so first of all, the backs of the seats are all a matte black, um, as well as the headrests, um, and really the, the top portion of the seats down here on some of the bottom. Um, so we'll actually probably paint the entire bottom matte black. Uh, we may paint most of it matte black and then do the gloss over the top of it. Um, so I'll just get my brush here and start here on the back. Now when we do this, we want to make sure we don't go over the edges at all. Um, we have uh, that, that nice red finish on the edge. Um, that we don't want to get any of this black paint on. So I'm just going to go very carefully to the edge here. And then once you get into the middle, you can be a little bit more reckless. So that's what we're going to look like so far. Uh, the pieces that appear glossy still are actually just the pieces that haven't dried. Uh, so we'll continue letting this dry while we move on to the next one. Uh, we'll finish all of the matte black and then we'll go back and we'll add uh, the glossy black accents throughout it. So now we have the second seat completed up to that point as well. Um, the last thing we need to paint the matte black on is going to be the back of the front piece here. Um, this one also has a lot of edges, so we're going to have to be really careful around all three edges. Um, actually, we need a little bit more black paint here. Um, running a little bit dry, even though this is a very small space. So there we have the back of that painted with the matte black as well. It's still wet, so it still looks glossy. So the last thing that we need to paint before final assembly here is going to be the glossy accents that are on the seats. Like I said, looking at the seats, part of them are matte black, part of them are glossy. Um, so we're just gonna get a little bit of glossy paint here. And for this, I'm gonna use a smaller brush. Um, this is gonna be some, some smaller areas um, for the most part. And so looking for the, the best brush to use here. So as far as the glossy goes, there's actually some lines down here in the, the seat that I'm gonna to try to paint along the inside of those. 
Um, so I'm just going to get this glossy paint. Like I said, it's going to go over the matte black. And so you're not going to really see a difference in color, um, just a little bit of a difference in sheen. Um, so I can just paint there down inside of there. Um, and then we'll continue this um, around the front, even around the front edge here of uh, the, this rest in the middle. Uh, that's going to be glossy as well. Um, and like I said, it's, it's going to probably be a little bit difficult to actually see exactly what we're painting because we already have really good black coverage. Um, and now we're just adding a thin layer of glossy black um, just to kind of almost give it a two-tone look. Um, and then down at the bottom, there's a seat um, that I'm going to paint uh, the middle part of it, or maybe I'll paint the outer part of it uh, glossy as well. I don't really know what uh, that part looks like because I can't find a picture of an empty seat. Um, I'm sure if one exists out there somewhere, you may even have one yourself, um, but it's also not going to be super visible. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of go with a little bit of creative freedom there. Repeat that with the second seat. So that's going to complete uh, painting the entire model. Um, so now it's going to be the, the final step of assembly. I don't know if you can see the different sheens there on camera. In person, it looks kind of cool. Um, like I said, it doesn't stand out a lot, but it's also not meant to stand out a lot. Um, it, it's meant to be pretty subtle. So now let's start assembling this. So for assembly, we're going to start with this base plate here, and we're going to start with one of the rows of seats. Um, now what I'd recommend, I'd recommend looking at your two uh, rows of seats and seeing if one of them looks better than the other. Um, sometimes it looks better just because the pieces fit together better. Sometimes it's because um, you painted it a little bit better. Whatever it may be, that is the one that I would put in the front. Um, so it's actually gonna have to let's install the back one first. I want this one on the front. Um, the pieces just fit together a little bit better. So we're gonna take this other one here and we're gonna put it in the, in the back. So here on the back, we have these two tabs. These are actually gonna go in the two tabs on the back of the plate here. And then there's two tabs here that are gonna go in tabs that are further up. So it's gonna cross this beam here in the middle. Um, but we'll just simply take this seat here and work it down into place. Now, um, this may be a little bit more difficult to snap together than previous pieces, um, just because um, even, even if you're careful, you're going to get a little bit of paint um, in places that you probably shouldn't have. And so that will make it a little bit more difficult to snap together. You may have to force it a little bit more, rock it, um, try really hard not to break anything because um, you don't want to break anything at this point. Um, but we're just going to kind of press these pieces down into place. And then it's going to have us add two handlebars, same as before. Um, the handlebars are pretty much mostly the same, but if they, you have a couple that are worse off, um, those are probably the ones that I would add first. Um, they're in the back row. They're not going to be as visible. You're going to have another row of seats covering them. Um, mine, like I said, they all look pretty much the same. Um, so I'm just going to kind of grab two and you'll just press them down and kind of rock them into place. Um, you don't want to press down too hard. These, these legs are very fragile. Um, if you remember from when I've painted it, Two of them actually broke a little bit when I was popping them out. I was able to glue them back together, um, but they are very fragile. So I like to um, basically just kind of line it up with the holes, put a finger down here and another one up here on each side, um, and then just kind of rock it down into place. Um, you press a little bit at the bottom and then rock it, and um, you'll see you can get a pretty good connection down there. Now that we have the back row in place, we'll do the same thing with the front row here. Um, so it's going to snap into place uh, the same way that the first one did. Um, so we'll line it up with these holes and just kind of press down. And then we'll do the same thing with these lap bars. And so that's what we're going to end up there with this piece completed. Um, now this front piece here is going to attach onto this bottom here and we'll start here at the front and we'll just drop these two tabs in the front here um, into those two slots and then just kind of work our way to the back. 
uh, make sure everything lines up and snap it down into place. Now with this piece on being the front of the train um, and some connection points there, you can see even around where we've done some stuff already, um, there's actually a few tabs that we want to try to hide um, a little bit. Um, and this part, I actually want to be a little bit more careful with the wood putty. We're still going to use the wood putty um, to fill them in. Um, in the other areas, I was a little bit excessive. I kind of rubbed it all over. Um, I want to be a little bit more uh, focused on just the specific areas on this one. I don't want to be getting it all over the place um, just because I don't want to have to repaint a ton. Um, and so just very carefully here, I'm going to go over each of these tab openings um, with a little bit of putty and then we'll let it dry a second and then sand it off and then we'll do some touch up painting around it. Like I said, you wanna be a little bit more deliberate and careful um, doing it here, just because like I said, we don't wanna to have to repaint everything. Um, so while we let that dry for a second, I'm gonna go back to this back train now and then do a little bit of touch up paint. Um, snap and plate pieces together. There's a few places that I scratched um, the black paint. Um, and then there's just a few other small little areas to touch up as well, um, especially around seams from where we connected those pieces. Um, so first off, I can use this matte black paint here and just kind of go around some of these edges again where I got a little bit of paint on them um, or rubbed a little bit of paint off, snapping things together. Um, just make sure that it looks very clean. And the next color is going to be our metallic silver. So we, we still have some of this left over. Um, so we can actually just come along um, down here at the back. I could probably fill in these tabs as well. I'm not going to. I'm not looking at the back of the model as much. I mostly did things that are forward facing. Um, however, I am going to go over it and touch up um, these tabs, make sure they're silver. Also, from where I was grabbing this around the edges, um, I rubbed a little bit of the paint off. It probably wasn't completely dry yet. Um, and also around the edges, it's not bad to have an extra coat anyways. Um, but I just kind of go around these edges and add a little bit more paint. Now we're also going to grab a little bit of this gray paint that we have here um, and use this for just a minor touch up um, on top of the, the handlebars. Um, now, when we did this before, we did mix it with just a little bit of silver, so I'm going to put just a little bit of silver in there. Um, with this, I'm going to try to be very deliberate on my touch-up so we don't um, completely change the complexion here, but we'll mix a little bit of the silver in with the gray, um, and then just kind of do some minor touch-ups here on the handlebars um, just to, to make it look good again. And now it's time to return our focus to the front car again. Um, so once again, we'll get our sandpaper here and just very carefully sand uh, the putty, uh, get it smooth. Now on the front, we want to be very careful on the, also on the edges. Um, once again, just like I said, we, we don't want to have to repaint everything, especially the areas that we, we did the gloss over. Um, don't want to ruin that, that gloss spray that we put on here. It's not quite completely dry yet either, so that does make this a little bit more difficult. And then once again, we're going to be very careful as we do this great touch up here um, to really only cover up, uh, hopefully, the wood putty. Um, I may try to add a little bit more clear coat over this um, just to, to clean it up a little bit, um, but we want to make sure that we just don't have to do a ton here. And then here on the sides, um, we can get some more of this gunmetal color we, hit, we we painted that base plate with and just kind of go over that um, both sides here and make sure that it looks really clean um, as well as on the bottom. Um, we did a lot of sanding there on the bottom as well as some putty work um, so we can just kind of paint over the entire so there I feel like we've been able to blend that in really well. Um, maybe not 100% perfect, but I think it looks better than it would with the connection points. So the last thing to assemble now is to put the two pieces together. So we're gonna take this piece here and snap 
uh, the, the four tabs on the top of it into the four holes um, that they line up with here on uh, the bottom piece. Um, these back wheels do fit into these two openings here as well. Um, so you gotta, if you line those up, um, then that's gonna make it a little bit easier to, to get the tabs, I think, in place. Um, and they actually don't fit extremely well. Uh, so you gotta kind of bend this a little bit. Maybe I've got a little bit too much paint in there, um, but we'll still get it lined up and snap it into place. Just kind of rock it a little bit. And so that's gonna complete the model. So now we'll just put it on our stand. Um, the stand just has two tabs here um, that will hook into the bottom of the coaster. Um, it also straddles kind of this little beam down here at the bottom. And it kind of holds it just like that. And so with that, we have a completely assembled and painted lightning rod coaster cutout model. This is from Dollywood. Um, I think it turned out really nice. Um, there's a few connections that would probably be a little bit better if we didn't have paint in there. Um, but overall, I think it's going to look really good, especially when you have it sitting as a display piece. Um, this is available from Dollywood directly. I don't know the exact price, probably about $45. Like I said, the price was removed from this model. Um, I picked this one up on eBay. If the seller I purchased it from still has them on eBay, I'll put the link down below uh, to get it. I'll also have links for cut files, for the SVG cut files for the logo down here as well as the grill. Overall, I think this is a really great looking model. I haven't ridden lightning rods since the iBox conversion. I only rode it with the topper track at the time. It was my number one coaster. I really need to get back there and ride it again. Um, but I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you with your model. If you did like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, that's fine as well. If you wanna see more videos with nano coasters and coaster cutouts, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I have a few more models that I'm getting ready to assemble. And so hopefully I'll have a few more videos this summer uh, as well as some other things coming this fall. Thanks for watching and have a great day.